Here we go with my teacher, my obsession. We start with the school janitor who's just having a dance while doing some mopping. But then he hears something and goes to investigate. A scream comes from the classroom and there's this girl in there sat on the floor in distress. So he goes to get help. On his way down the corridor, here's another girl. She tells him to run and there's blood on her hands. So we cut to some time earlier and the new English teacher, Mr. Sumner, what? has pulled up outside his new school with his daughter, Riley, who is enrolling as a student. Ooh. She doesn't want to go to this new school, but he explains to her and us that he needed a fresh start to get his life back on track. Oh, I see. She doesn't want to walk in with him, though, because she doesn't want the other kids to know her dad is the teacher. Now we're in some hall where all the other students are, and this girl, Kyla, is taking photos of everyone for the yearbook. She's clocked Mr. Sumner, who's looking pretty hot in this cardigan thing, but Trisha, who's far better looking, has her eye on him too. I give it two days before I have him wrapped around my little finger. So it's Mr. Sumner's class, and the next few minutes are spent telling the audience what a cool teacher he is. Ah, Ed Sheeran. That's cool. Rihanna, take it easy. Bitches. Social media. Chill. Bruno Mars. Yeah, I see. I see that. I want to be someone you can talk to. Kyla and Mr. Sumner bond over the Beatles, because somehow that's come up in an English class. After class, Kyla meets Riley in the computer room, and they bond over not having any other friends. Kyla tells Riley she may need some help in her dad's class, so ask if they can study together, and now they're best friends. Then Kyla waits outside and takes photos of Mr. Sumner. When she gets home, we meet Kyla's mum. She's on this cheap and nasty fitness machine. We find out she's been seeing some guy she met at the grocery store, but it's very early days. Then Kyla goes to bed and fantasizes about sex with Mr. Sumner. Okay. Next day at Riley's house, Kyla starts asking questions about Mr. Sumner and we find out that Riley's mum was cheating on her dad for ages and that's why they've had to move. Kyla then tells Riley that her dad left when she was six. Yes, of course. Now things are beginning to make sense. They're about to study when Riley goes for a shit. Kyla decides to take this opportunity to go to Mr. Sumner's room and feel the sheets. In his class the next day, Trisha is making a play for Mr. Sumner. Because I know what I want. Her attempt falls flat, so at lunch she approaches Riley and tries to make friends with her, because clearly that's how to bang Mr. Sumner, being his daughter's friend. Trisha tells Riley that she reckons Kyla is a lesbian. Beg to differ. Kyla overhears this and shouts at Riley. Why were you talking to Trisha? She's dangerous, Riley. She's very clearly obsessed with your dad. Kyla tells Riley that last year Trisha was banging a history teacher who got sacked, and she doesn't want the same thing happening to Mr. Sumner. Beg to differ. Back at Kyla's, her mum's date has arrived at the door, and look, it's Mr. Sumner. Her mum seems surprised that he and Kyla know each other. How? I don't know. I'd have thought he may have mentioned what his job was on one of their previous dates, but whatever, never mind. Mr. Sumner has bought flowers, and Kyla is putting them in a vase. Then, this unfortunate accident happens. Thank you. Oh. Oops. He doesn't have a spare shirt, so Kyla suggests their only option is to have the date at the house. They both agree and decide that Kyla should join them. It turns out that Mr. Sumner is hilarious. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Kyla spends the evening staring at him, but it seems he's really into her mum, which I'm finding pretty hard to believe, to be honest. He's in his early 40s, ripped, blonde and tanned, and she looks like she could be one of my mum's mates. Anyway, they start getting a bit too full on, so Kyla goes upstairs where it seems like she has a plan. Her mum is downstairs making out with Mr. Sumner when they hear Kyla scream. She says there's someone outside watching her, so Mr. Sumner goes to investigate. There's nobody there, of course, and they want to call the police, but Kyla says, no, I'd rather just hang around with you two down here and instigate some physical contact. Next morning, Kyla goes into the bathroom and sees Mr. Sumner coming out of the shower. Yeah, sorry, there's no way he'd be banging her mum. When they sit down for breakfast, Kyla is clearly livid that these two are together. On the way to school, they swing by to pick up Riley, and in the car, Kyla starts testing the water with Mr. Sumner. She doesn't see how grown up I've become. At school, Riley tells Kyla that Trisha told her it was actually Kyla who was banging the history teacher who got sacked last year, not Trisha. Of course. And they fall out over it. Kyla is so angry about this, she threatens Trisha. Stay away from Riley. That night in bed, Kyla decides to take some suggestive photos of herself. In the morning, Riley comes up to smooth things over with Kyla, but someone has put hundreds of photocopies of the photos she took last night in her locker. They fall everywhere and everyone sees them. So Kyla goes immediately to report this to Mr. Sumner, who we're now calling Chris. Chris? You mean Mr. Sumner? Whatever. 
Kyla is now spinning a web of deceit. She tells her mum not to rush things with Chris, but telling Riley that she really wants things to work out for him and her mum. In reality, she just wants to bang him herself. She does, however, confess to Riley that it was her banging the history teacher and that the photos in her locker were for him, but she doesn't know who got hold of them and how. When school finishes, Kyla bumps into Chris in the hall. He's back in the cardigan thing and he offers her a ride home. After he drops her off, he watches her walk off and we get the first hint that maybe he's tempted. Guys will be guys. Kyla goes to her room, gets some photos of him out and starts touching them. Kyla's mum is in her room later getting ready for a date with Chris who's downstairs and for some reason his phone is on her dressing table. It starts vibrating. Kyla sees that Chris is getting a load of messages from Trisha and tells her mum she has to read them and yet it looks dodgy. I want you to watch me myself under my desk. Chris denies any knowledge of this, but Kyla's mum kicks him out anyway. For some reason, he's sulking in his car outside her house, and Kyla comes out to ask what's going on, but that's not what she's there for. She starts coming on to him, and initially he resists, but there's no way he's stopping this, considering the horror he's been banging indoors. It doesn't get very far, but Kyla's pretty chuffed with herself. When she gets up to her room, we find out it was her who sent the text, pretending to be Trisha. The next day in class, the real Trisha is shoving her tits in Chris's face. I was just really struggling with And Kyla gets jealous. But then the principal interrupts the class with some police officers to take Trisha away. After class, Kyla tries it on with Chris again, but this time... It's an outright no. Kyla's mum is drinking because she's so depressed that she doesn't have a boyfriend anymore. <laughs> she reveals that Trisha got in trouble earlier because they have found a broken phone in her locker with the pictures of Kyla on it. Well played, Kyla. Smart. Now we see Riley's having a birthday party and everyone from school is there. Kyla gives Riley a hip flask before going upstairs to see if she can bang her dad. Chris tells her to leave because he's not in a very good mood right now. Excuse me? But she starts unbuttoning his pants. He tells her to leave at first, but then apparently thinks, whatever, I may as well just do it. And then they bang. Yes! But oh no, Riley walks in and catches him. Dad, what the hell? If you're going to bang one of your daughter's friends at a birthday party, maybe lock the door. What an idiot. <laughs> as she runs off, Chris follows her out to say sorry, and that it's over. It is over. Is it? I don't remember him ending anything. Or does he mean he's already shot his load? Who knows? Then he has the nerve to start trying to bollock Riley for drinking. What? Come on. Anyway, she runs off and Chris tells her mates to fuck off too. Kyla is still in the bedroom and tells him Riley has a drinking problem. She wants to pick up where they left off, but Chris refuses. Do you know how insane that sounds? You're my student. Um, you were literally about to get stuck into her about five minutes ago. I strongly suspect this is going to fall on deaf ears. So Chris goes off to find Riley and Kyla's pissed off as she thinks Riley is taking him away from her. Riley texts Kyla's mum and says they need to talk, but she's too busy on her shopping network fitness machine. After a tense English class, Kyla's mum comes in to see Chris and slaps him. She tells Kyla that a meeting's been scheduled with the principal, but she's like, look mum, I'm 18 and I can do who and what I want. We're in love. Psychiatrists have a word for something like this. Delusional. Her mum has now realised that it was Kyla who framed Trisha for the text and the photos. Kyla doesn't care though. She's had enough of her mum interfering with her personal life. Chris is getting texts from Kyla but he's ignoring them. Riley approaches him and asks how he could shag her friend. He says, oh, it's been so difficult since your mum left. I've been so empty, so lost. He doesn't expect her to forgive him but he says sorry and this time it's definitely over. It is over. Kyla then calls Trisha and Trisha agrees to meet her. Kyla starts slapping herself and then breaks her own fingers to make it look like Trisha has beaten her up. Chris and Riley see what's happened and call the police. Trisha is then arrested. Again. What? When Kyla's mum gets to the hospital, she believes Kyla's story and is now convinced, once again, that it was Trisha who did the text and the photos. Oh, I see. Kyla apologises to her mum for being rude earlier. Good! Good. Riley goes into Kyla's room and says her dad is no longer interested in her and that he's agreed to get help for his problem. Kyla tells Riley that she needs to take photos for the volleyball team because her hand is broken. Riley agrees and Kyla lets her borrow the camera. I'll do it for the team. Chris then goes into Kyla's room once again to tell her it's over. It is over. I thought I made that clear to you. No, Chris, no. But she's not having any of it. Chris leaves the room and Kyla looks menacingly at a scalpel. Oh, dear. That night, Chris is going into school to pack up his things because he's decided he can no longer work there. I'm going to quit. 
How has he not been sacked? I thought maybe there's a chance nobody knew, but there was a meeting scheduled with the principal about him fucking a student. Whatever, let's move on. Kyla's mum goes to visit her in hospital, but Kyla's not in her room. Riley is on her way to the volleyball game, and she goes to meet her dad in the classroom, but Kyla is there, and she stabs Riley with a scalpel. Then she goes into Chris's classroom and starts touching him. When he sees the scalpel, she holds it to his neck and says it's to make their sex more exciting. She then reveals that she stabbed Riley, thinking that she's killed her, but she hasn't. Riley is crawling around outside in the hallway. Chris loses it and pushes Kyla across the room. He asks her where Riley is, and somehow Kyla has managed to kick Chris in the leg so that he falls, bangs his head on the desk, and is now unconscious. Now we're back where we were at the start of the film. What we weren't shown first time was Kyla following the janitor down the hall. And right after Riley tells him to run, Kyla slits his throat. The girls then start having a rubbish fight, which is surprisingly even, considering Kyla has a scalpel and Riley couldn't stand up 30 seconds ago. Riley manages to knock the scalpel from Kyla's hand, then smashes her face in with her own camera. I'm not sorry. I know. Next, we see Chris helping the paramedics take Riley into an ambulance, and Kyla is being taken into another one. At a later unspecified time, the Sumners have moved again. Chris is now at a new school, and Riley is in college. There's a nice family moment where Chris gives Riley the keys to the truck, and she drives off to her new college. But what's this? A hooded figure. Is it Kyla? We don't know, because no sequel has even been planned yet. It is over. It is over. But it is over. Until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.